I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ezekiel 33, 1-11 Again the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people, and say to them, When I bring the sword upon a land, and the people of the land take a man from their territory, and make him their watchman, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning, his blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes warning will save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Therefore you, O son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus you say, If our transgressions and our sins lie upon us, and we pine away in them, how can we then live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live, turn, Turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? Just as the prophet Ezekiel warned the Israelites of impending judgment from Almighty God, the watchmen of our time are warning whoever will listen that God is getting ready to judge an unbelieving and unrepentant world. Aloha and welcome to our very first live streaming Bible prophecy update. It's 9 a.m. here in Hawaii. And after this live stream ends, we will have this uploaded to our YouTube channel for viewing and also across our other social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter. So if you don't mind, I want to get right to it. Uh, we certainly have a lot to get to. I'm hoping in our time together today that you will be blessed and encouraged by what the Lord has put on my heart to share with you. I want to talk with you today about where I see this unequaled, unmatched, unprecedented coronavirus pandemic heading, and perhaps more importantly, what our response to this should be. It's my belief that and I know this is not going to come as any surprise <laughs> that I believe this and say this, but I truly believe that this may in fact be that which ultimately leads to the rapture of the church, the Antichrist's revelation, and the seven-year tribulation, in that order, by the way. And if you'll kindly indulge me, I will explain how I get there, and I will also explain why it is that we are at the crossroads of the greatest opportunity of our lifetime. Let me preface this by saying that if you're watching this, 
And you're one who has been shaken to the core by this. Well, I have very good news for you. However, I first have to be true to the Word of God and the God of the Word and tell you the truth in love concerning what the Bible says is coming next, specifically in the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, and namely that of a new world order out of this world chaos and disorder. I would submit that what's happening now may in fact be creating the perfect storm for a one world government, a one world economy, and a one world religion, exactly as the Bible says will happen at the time of the end. And the reason is that this coronavirus pandemic has the propensity to collapse governments, crash economies, and unite religions as it seems that it is even now doing. In the interest of time, and by virtue of the sheer volume of information, I mean, my goodness, this last couple of weeks was really intense, just trying to read through everything and do all the research on everything. It's just, it's so voluminous. So what I did is I condensed it, and I want to just quickly quote some of what has been reported in just the last few days. And please keep in mind that everything is changing, not just on a daily basis, but really on an hourly basis. On Wednesday, the Washington Examiner published a report with the headline, Iran may well collapse under coronavirus strain, warns top EU diplomat. Also on Wednesday, the Associated Press published a report with a similar headline, We are collapsing. Virus pummels medics in Spain and Italy. Boy, it's really bad in Italy. Also on Wednesday, CNN published an article about how the coronavirus, this is interesting, <laughs> is dealing a blow to Russian President Vladimir Putin's plans to stay in power until the year 2036. You might say this is a game changer across the board on a global scale. Thursday, the Times of Israel had this breaking news about a unity government between Netanyahu and Gantz in the face of this coronavirus pandemic. I was thinking about this, and it seems that an infection is more effective than an election. Just thought I'd throw that in, uh, lighten it up, a uh, little bit of humor, or at least an attempt at humor. By the way, if you don't hear anybody laughing, that's because there's nobody here to be laughing. Um, there is just a small team of people for whom I am grateful for that are here. And so I appreciate your patience with me as I try to do this. It's very um, different because I don't have anybody to yell at. I don't have anybody sitting in the front row to spit on. Okay, well, suffice it to say, the world's governments are struggling at best, collapsing at worst in their attempts to cope with COVID-19, which brings me to this ominous report from breaking Israel news on Thursday. Listen to this. In this article, they quote former British Prime Minister Gordon Brown 
calling on world leaders to form a one world government in order to cope with COVID-19. And by the way, he's in good company. There are many now that are suggesting that this has to be a global effort on a global scale governmentally. Now, the problem becomes, who's going to be the head of said one world government? According to a Haaretz op-ed piece on Tuesday, Israel's health minister believes the cure for the coronavirus is, wait for it, here it comes, the Messiah. Oh, well, of course, as Christians, we know him as the Antichrist in place of Christ, the false Christ, which then brings up the question of how will this Antichrist, this false Messiah, actually be able to cure the coronavirus? Answer, in a word, vaccine. Oh, this is no ordinary vaccine. It comes at no extra charge with what's known as a quantum dot tattoo or mark if you prefer. And this because they are then able with this to track and record who's been vaccinated and who has not. According to one source, this will come vis-a-vis -vis the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation who have developed what's known as ID 2020. This is probably as good of a time as any to say to you, do not take my word for this. You be a Berean and you search the scriptures and you see if what I'm sharing with you today is true or not. Go online and search. It's there. ID 2020. Search quantum dot tattoo. It is technologically to me describing exactly what we're told they will have and do and force everyone to take in Revelation chapter 13. Now, we still have another problem. What's that problem? Well, so the new world, this new order, this reorder, if you prefer, has addressed who and what, but they still need to know how they're going to process such a massive, and it's going to be massive, it already is, this massive data. Answer, 5G technology. You know, it's interesting. I was struck by this as I was reading all of the reports and articles, and we've already seen internet speeds slowing down due to the masses of people who are stuck inside and online. And they're all online at the same time. And so it's already slowing down internet speeds across the globe. Very interesting. By the way, let me parenthetically say that there are other prophetic developments that are being eclipsed by this coronavirus pestilence. And I'm calling it that for a reason. I think it would be deemed obvious reasons. There is this plague of locusts. You don't hear much about it because of the coronavirus, but it is sweeping across the globe and destroying everything in its path. I read a report this last week that it was now heading towards, of all places, China. I, I, I actually, it, it, this is another thing you can uh, search to see how devastating swarms of locusts are. They destroy everything. And if this weren't bad enough, there have been earthquakes in very unusual places, exactly as Jesus said there would be in Matthew 24. 
Just 10 days ago, a very unusual earthquake in Salt Lake City, Utah, knocked to the ground the trumpet of the angel Moroni there atop the Mormon temple, and it fell to the ground. I'm sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm chuckling a little bit. I love it when God does that. Wow, pastor, where's the love? Well, you know what? Mormonism is a false religion. It is a false religion. And you know what's interesting? It reminds me of 1 Samuel chapter 5, when the Philistines brought the Ark of the Covenant into the temple of Dagon. And this statue, this false god of Dagon fell down to the ground, face down, and broke in front of the Ark of the Covenant. Dagon it. I don't know if that's where they got the name, but I suppose you could say, and I think you would agree, that God today is lovingly trying to get the world's attention as a final warning, because He's a loving God who doesn't want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. In my quiet time with the Lord, this last couple of weeks, He directed me to Exodus and the plagues that came upon Egypt. And it's important to understand that Egypt is a picture or a type in Scripture of the world. So I went into my archives and was reminded that all 10 plagues struck against the false gods that the Egyptians worshiped. The Nile, the frogs, I take uh, issue with the frogs, not frogs, the frogs. They actually worshiped. These were gods. They had over 3,000 gods. And all of these plagues struck these false gods that the Egyptians had worshipped. Why do I point this out? For a number of reasons, chief of which is the prophetic parallel with the plagues in Exodus that came upon Egypt and the judgments in Revelation that will come upon the world yet future. In fact, it was, I think, in 2008, we were uh, in Exodus, our study through the Bible, book by book and chapter by chapter and verse by verse. And we actually did a study on the type, the comparison, the parallel between every single one of those plagues and the book of Revelation. I mean, it is to the T. I would suggest that the true and living God has struck at the modern day false gods of sports, entertainment, and especially the God of money. And to me, the question becomes one of whether or not this is the final warning, and I believe it is, and if so, will it be met with a hardening of the heart or a surrendering of the heart. Hang in there with me. I, I want to sort of turn a corner here, and it's really important that you hear my heart and not misunderstand me when I say this. But if it sounds like I believe life will never return to normal, it's because I believe life will never return to normal. I was just sharing with the team before going live that I and becoming increasingly convinced that this coronavirus is going to end in the rapture for us as Christians. I could be wrong, but I would rather be ready and have life return to normal, whatever that looks like, than not be ready and not have life return to normal. In other words, I'd rather prepare <laughs> and have it not happen than not prepare only 
to have it happen. If, let's just say, life returns to a semblance of normalcy and it doesn't go down this way or happen this way at this time, then I want to present you with a question. What have we lost? What have we lost? We have nothing to lose and everything to gain. At the beginning I mentioned that we stand at the crossroads of the greatest opportunity of our lifetime. And what I mean by that is it is now <laughs> that opportunity to reach the lost while we still have time. What have we lost if we reach the lost? We have nothing to lose and everything to gain, namely that of the salvation of many in this history's last hour, I really believe the last moments of world history as we knew it, know it. So we've been doing these prophecy updates for 14 years now, going on 15 actually. And with the exception of Christmas and Resurrection Sunday, every Sunday, every week I have stood behind this pulpit, as has been my privilege to do. And I have shared with you that the Lord is coming, that Bible prophecy is being fulfilled, that the time is near. And I stand before you today and before the Lord today. And I am saying to you, that it's not now that the Lord is near, the return of the Lord is near, the return of the Lord is here. I truly believe that with all of my heart. A couple years ago we started doing these updates and ending them with what's known as the ABCs of salvation, and with it the gospel of salvation in the person of Jesus Christ. And that's how I would like to and our time together today. What is the gospel? The gospel means good news. Your debt has been paid. Your penalty has been paid. You are free to go. That penalty was paid when Jesus came the first time and was crucified and buried and rose again on the third day. And good news, He's coming back again one day. Uh, I just thought of this. I think the Lord would have me to share this, but very interesting. Think about this. So that 10th plague, you know what the 10th plague was, right? It was the death of the firstborn son, the first begotten son. Except if you had a lamb and the blood of that lamb on the doorposts of your house. And then what would happen is when that 10th plague hit and it hit, and the angel of death came and it came. If you had the blood of the lamb in the shape of a cross on the doorposts of your house, that angel of death would pass over you and you would be saved. You know who the Passover lamb is and the fulfillment of that prophecy is? It is in the person of Jesus Christ. So those who have the blood of the Lamb of God, the person of Jesus Christ, His shed blood in our stead on the doorposts of our lives, if you will, will be saved. And that angel of death will pass over. Uh, one more thought on this. You go to Israel today and all of the Jewish people are in their homes on this upcoming Passover. Think about this. Now, I, I know some conspiracy juices are flowing right now, so let me just go on record and say, I am not making any predictions. All I'm saying is, is Resurrection Sunday is coming. It's the Passover celebration in Israel. It's Resurrection Sunday for us as Christians. That's coming up. And isn't it interesting? on this, the eve of the Jewish Passover and Resurrection Sunday. That's the good news. 
that Jesus came, He was crucified, He was buried, He rose again on the third day, and He's coming back again one day. Now, the ABCs of salvation are just one explanation, a simple childlike explanation of salvation. It's not the only way, it's a way. And I just want to say, if you're watching this today, or maybe it's going to be on television that you're watching this. We have this on uh, the local stations here, Kahlo and Olelo as well. If you're watching this and <laughs> you're thinking to yourself, uh, oh my goodness, this is uh, kind of scaring me a little bit. That can be a good thing. Uh, let me say it this way. I would rather scare you into heaven than flatter you into hell. I know that might sound a little blunt, but it's the truth. It's the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. I want to share with you the ABCs of salvation. It is how to be saved. If you've never called upon the name of the Lord, I implore you today, today is the day of salvation. And how do you know that God did not lead you to this video, to watch this video for such a time as this? What is the A? The A is admit or acknowledge that you've sinned, that you're a sinner and in need of the Savior. This is what it means to repent. Repentance is an interesting word. It's, it's actually a, a military word. It means about face. You do a 180. It's that 180 turning from your sin and turning to the Savior, Jesus Christ, for forgiveness of sin. Romans 3.10 says, there is no one righteous, not even one. You might think that you're a good person, and maybe you are, but you'll never be good enough. And Romans 3.23 tells us why. It's because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 is really interesting because it sort of packages the bad news first, with the good news. What's the bad news? Oh, uh, the wages of sin is death. It's the death penalty. We've all been sentenced to death because of sin, for the wages of sin is death. That's the bad news. Here's the good news. The good news is the gift of God, gift of God, is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the A. Here's the B. The B is for believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And as Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, that God raised Him from the dead. If you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. That is definite. That is absolute. It doesn't say you might be saved. You could be saved. You should be saved. No, you will be saved. And then lastly, the C. The C is for call upon the name of the Lord. Or as Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And here's why. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. How do you do that? Oh, Romans 10, 13. This is what seals the deal. It says, all who call upon the name of the Lord will, will be saved. One last thought and I appreciate your time. If there was ever a time that I could stand before you and say what I'm about to say, that time is now and today. Tomorrow's not promised for any of us. And the time is at hand. I know this, uh, I just say it. There's no guarantees. I'm going to be here 
on Thursday night or Sunday morning, or that you're going to be here Thursday night or Sunday morning next week, or how about tomorrow morning, Monday morning? There are no guarantees. Do you realize that the rapture of the church will come at an hour that is expected not? It can happen at any time. It can happen today. And if you're not ready, I implore you to be ready. Get right with the Lord, so you're ready for the Lord. I pray you will. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you. Lord, I know there are some that are watching this that are really struggling, really hurting, many of whom may have lost their jobs, their businesses. Maybe they're going to lose their home. But you, O oh Lord, <laughs> I'm reminded of one saying that you'll never know that Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you have. And Lord, I, I, I hope that what I've done in this time that we've had today is I've gotten people to you, Jesus, as quickly as possible, because you're the only answer. You're the only answer. There is salvation found in no other but you, Jesus. And even those who may know you and you know them, I pray that this would draw them near to you and that you in turn would draw near to them, that you would encourage and comfort and strengthen. And lastly, Lord, for anyone who might be watching, who has never called upon you, believing in their heart, confessing with their mouth, trusting in you for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, please, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you and thank you. Allah. One of the many signs we are living in the last days, right before the return of Jesus Christ, is nations will be in a state of anxiousness and uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation, as we read in Luke 21, 25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth the stress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. As the world continues to spiral out of control, a man, I believe, who is alive and well today, will soon come on the world scene seeming to have all the answers, and he will bring a false peace to the nations of the world. Three and a half years after this man comes on the world scene, his true intentions will become known. He will bring war the likes of this planet has never seen, and with war will come famine, pestilence, and death. The Bible refers to him as the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. What do we know about the Antichrist? The Antichrist has many names. The King of Fierce Countenance, the Prince who is to come, the Beast, the Son of Perdition, the Worthless Shepherd, the Man of Sin, the Lawless One. The first sealed judgment in the book of Revelation is the releasing of the Antichrist upon the earth. Revelation 6, 1 and 2. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse, he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. The Antichrist will be evil, yet appear as a savior. He will be outspoken and have great speaking ability. He will have a fierce countenance. The Antichrist will be extremely proud. He will not desire women. He will be a military genius. The Antichrist will be mortally wounded. He will be indwelt by Satan. He will come from a revived Roman Empire. The Antichrist will control a one world government. He will control a one world religion. He will control a one world monetary system known as the mark of the beast. It is evident that planet earth is in the time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. The world is seeing death, destruction and despair at unprecedented levels. The events the world is suffering through right now, awful as they are, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, there will be a time of severe distress this world has never seen or ever will see again, as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, just as it has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. This time of distress Jesus is referring to is called the seven year tribulation, in which the inhabitants of planet earth who have rejected God and remain unrepentant in their sin will face his wrath. 
These terrible judgments are pictured as seven seals opened, seven trumpets blown, and seven bowls poured out. The first four of the seven seals are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal and the white horse rides, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal and the red horse rides, war will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the third seal and the black horse rides, famine will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the fourth seal and the pale horse rides, death and Hades will be unleashed. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 7.4 billion, meaning 1.85 billion people will die during this time. When the fifth seal is broken, there will be a period of time when Christians will be martyred for their faith in Jesus Christ. When the sixth seal is broken, there will be a great earthquake. The sun will become black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon like blood, and the stars of heaven will fall to the earth. When the seventh seal is broken, there will be silence in heaven for about a half an hour. After seven seals are opened, seven trumpets are blown. When the first angel sounds, vegetation is struck. Hail and fire mingled with blood will be thrown to the earth and a third of the trees and all the green grass will be burned up. When the second angel sounds, the seas are struck. Something like a great mountain burning with fire is thrown into the sea, which seems to be a meteor causing a third of the sea to become blood, and a third of the living creatures in the sea to die, and a third of the ships to be destroyed. When the third angel sounds, the waters are struck. A great star falls from heaven, burning like a torch on the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood, and a third of the waters become Wormwood and many men will die from the water, because it will be made poisonous. When the fourth angel sounds, the heavens are struck. A third of the sun is struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them are darkened. A third of the day will not shine, and likewise the night. When the fifth angel sounds, Satan is cast down from heaven to release demons from the bottomless pit to torment those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads for five months. When the sixth angel sounds, a demonic army numbering 200 million will kill a third of mankind. 3.7 billion people have now died at this time, equaling half of the world's population. When the seventh angel sounds, the temple of God is opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant is seen in his temple, and there are lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. After seven trumpets have sounded, seven bowls are poured out. When the first angel pours out his bowl, a foul and loathsome sore will come upon the men who have the mark of the beast and those who worship his image. When the second angel pours out his bowl on the sea, it will become blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea will die. When the third angel pours out his bowl, the rivers and springs of water will become blood. When the fourth angel pours out his bowl on the sun, power is given to him to scorch men with fire, and men are scorched with great heat. When the fifth angel pours out his bowl on the throne of the beast, his kingdom becomes full of darkness, and they will gnaw their tongues because of the pain. When the sixth angel pours out his bowl, it results in the Euphrates River being dried up and the armies of the Antichrist being gathered together to wage the battle of Armageddon. When the seventh angel pours out his bowl, a loud voice comes out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. A devastating earthquake flattening everything on planet earth followed by giant hailstones weighing 100 pounds each completes the seal, trumpet, and bowl judgments. God's judgment against this wicked and unrepentant world will leave no doubt as to his wrath against sin. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what? If his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning, my prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready!
The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine, faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.